Okay. Hi, everyone. So, today, today we are um, going to go ahead and make sure that we have our samplers ready to go. And if you are stitching along with me on the um, Halloween sampler, then um, we are going to look at the split stitch and the arrowhead stitch um, for sure. And then um, we may, I think I'll start the padded um, satin stitch uh, later today and then we can talk about filling that in because you start that with um, the split stitch. So, you know, we're going to be applying this here. So we'll probably do split stitch, arrowhead stitch. And then um, if we have time, then we'll start to get into the buttonhole heart. So at least that's my idea. Okay, um, things that we need to talk about. So slow crawl is over for this year. I hope that everybody had a good time. If you were couch crawling, um, I hope that that was something that you enjoyed. Hi again, David. Um, let's see, if you haven't checked out the website recently, make sure that you go um, check out the clearance section because we have a lot of great yarns that really need a new home so that we can bring in some fun new stuff. And Tina and I have um, been kind of waiting for a good time to bring in some of the Japanese kits and threads and um, we would really like to do that soon, but we got to make room. So um, go take home some fabulous clearance and um, it's a great time to get started on Christmas gifts. We are not that far away from Christmas if you happen to be one of those, those people who does gift at Christmas and I am one of them. Uh, it's time to get started on your stitchy gifts. Uh, and embroidery makes um, a lovely little stitchy gift, especially um, these cute little samplers from Kariki Press. So if you haven't checked those out on the website, please do. Let's see what else do I need to tell everybody. Um, make sure that you have submitted your photos of your passport um, and downloaded your patterns from all of your shops by September 15th. That's the last day to get those in. Um, we will choose prize winners after that. Uh, what else do we need to do? Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. Tina is still working on her t-shirt, knit along and crochet along. So make sure that you are joining her on Fridays for that. And I'm hoping that she will do a Sashiko video after she um, gets done with some of the t-shirt videos. So all kinds of fun stuff coming up. What else do we have going on? Uh, so we're going to stitch on our samplers for a little while. Um, I'll probably work with you through all of the different stitches. And then um, I will leave you all to go uh, work on your samplers. So today we're going to focus on that, um, the split stitch. So split stitch, arrowhead stitch, and possibly the buttonhole stitch. Um, and then when we come back on Monday, then we'll do fly stitch, the long and short stitch, and um, whipped back stitch. And, um, hi, Kathy! And, um, and the padded satin stitch we'll talk about as well, just because that's kind of related to the split stitch. So, you know, it's all in there together. Anyway, so we'll do all of that um, and over today and next Monday, and then... Um, if you have any questions, make sure that you're asking them um, in the comments because I can actually see them on my phone again, which is great. Because if you recall, we have downloaded, I don't know if you can see it, but we've downloaded all of our instructions um, for the sampler um, on our tablets, or perhaps you did it on your computer and you've printed your instructions, which is also fabulous. Um, so if you're following along with the Halloween embroidery sampler then I'm going to demonstrate the stitches um, now and if you are doing a different sampler then you may still want to stitch along um, or at least watch what I'm doing um, reference it later because uh, all of these stitches are stitches that may or may not be used in some of her other samplers so lots of fun stuff going on all right I'm gonna turn the camera and we'll get started all right let's see if i can get this set up nicely and hopefully this will work and give me just a minute to adjust the camera 
Alrighty, so the first one that we're going to look at is our split stitch. Um, and if you are following along, the instructions for split stitch are on page three of your PDF or your printed packet. And um, I am going to use, I think it's called a, is this the waist, the waist knot or the away knot? I think this is the waist knot. Yeah, it's the waist knot. So I'm just going to make a knot in my tail. Little knot right here in the tail. And I am going to stitch this a few inches away and I'm just gonna drop it out here. Just hanging out, way out here. There we go. So it's just gonna hang out here until we get done and then I'll snip this and then we will use the back, we'll use the tail that's left in the back to weave that tail back through so that we don't have a knot showing on the front side. And I'm choosing to do this because I'm starting this little sampler section and I don't really have any other stitching that I can attach this to. So that's when a waist knot is really useful. Um, and she does talk about that, I think it's on page two, maybe it's, yep, on page two. Um, on when to use a waist knot versus an away knot, etc. So um, I really like that she includes these little tips and tricks. Okay, and then she also has this little guide. So these are really helpful. So you go up at A, down at B, up at C, down at D, up at E, down at F, up at G, down at H, up at I, down at J. That's, that's the sequence of, of this. And she has it printed on here, which is really nice when you're getting started. You have a little bit of a guide so you can watch. So we're going to go ahead and go up at A and then talk about um, what we're doing next. So here's up at A. And now you can see here's the thread that will appear. This will be my tail, which I will weave in later. And the split stitch um, you use for thin outlines and you use it as padding underneath the satin stitch. So that's why this padded satin stitch down here, we'll talk about this another day because this has to have all the padding worked under it first before we can do the satin stitch on top. So um, what you do to make a split stitch is you make a straight stitch to start with. So that's why it's up at A, down at B. So there we go, up at A, down at B. And this is a really thin section because you're only using one strand. I'm practicing with one strand because that's what you're going to use for this sampler. And um, then you have to bring your needle back through at C. So a little bit, you don't wanna go uh, halfway through. You wanna go a little bit less than halfway through. And when you come back through, you wanna make sure that you are actually splitting, there it is, splitting the threads and the plies. So you can see how there's thread on each side of my needle. Because we are literally splitting the stitch. <laughs> I know, because <laughs> it's a split stitch. Uh, so um, once you bring this through, then um, you will go ahead and bring it down at D, which is the next one. So, so we did A, B, C, D. So here would be D. And then you pull this down. And then we're going to split it again. So you want to go about the same length away again and try to split your thread as evenly as you can. It's a little difficult when you're practicing because you only have one strand. So you're trying to split one strand. So down at F. And again, it's, you want to split that strand. There we go. And you just keep going and going and going and practicing your split stitch. And the split stitch, I think, looks a lot better when you have um, shorter stitches. But, um, you know, this is her little practice section. And I love that she has these little practice sections with um, sort of an abbreviated section of instructions on them so that as you are following along, um, if you have a little trouble, you can reference her printed instructions on your uh, sampler cloth 
if you don't necessarily have your tablet handy. And of course, if you know how to do split stitch already, then this is nothing new. Okay. And split stitch looks really pretty when you, um, again, when you're using that single strand of floss and, uh, okay, and then we finished out our split stitch because here we end it, Jay. All right, so uh, let's talk about ending. So um, I don't have any other section that I want to do in this specific color of thread right now. So because of that, what I need to do is I need to um, end my thread. So I need to tie it off and kind of hide my end um, because I want to make sure that I switch colors to do my arrowhead stitch because she did hers in black. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mine in black as well. Uh, and then I'll use the green for the um, buttonhole heart just like she did um, just to follow around and make it so it looks just like my little photo. Well, sort of just like my little photo because mine may not look as good as hers. I don't stitch as much as um, the owner of Kariki Press does. So, um, and I, but I do enjoy stitching. I enjoy my embroidery. Okay, so we have to finish our little section here. So what we're going to do, and she does have some extra instructions again on that page too, if you need a little bit of help um, about ending a thread when you're getting close to the end. Uh, you want to leave enough so it's easy to secure by weaving through several stitches, and we have plenty. Um, don't ever run yourself completely out of thread. It's really, really hard to um, to weave in your end if you have, like, this much thread left. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, it's always better to just go ahead and get out that new piece of floss, even though it pains you. Um, so anyway, what you're going to do is you'll want to make sure that you weave through several stitches on the back side of the embroidery. And um, you never want to stop like partway through a stitch. You always want to stop um, at the end of a stitch. So you're better off to go ahead and um, again get that new piece of floss. Start a new piece of floss if you need to. And with the split stitch we just have some tiny little stitches available here on the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and run my needle under a couple of them twice. And this is not um, ever going to really be laundered, but even if it was, this is a fairly secure little stitch now. So I'm just going to take my tiny little needles and trim that short, and off we go. So there we've secured our end, and there is our happy little split stitch. It's probably a little hard to see. Let's lift it up here, see if that's a little bit better. So there's our happy little split stitch. You can kind of see the split right there and right there. Okay, so now we're going to switch our threads. So I'm going to park my needle up there on my needle minder while I do this. And find my thread. And I'm going to put away my little dab of thread here and store it. So I've just stored that back in the cardboard so I know where it is. Um, because all those little pieces are still useful and... Anyone who knows me will know I have lots of thread in my house. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to grab one of the black and then I'm going to go ahead and loop this back together because I don't need the rest of this right now. So just sort of softly loop it and I'm going to store that back in here again because I like to keep everything stored nicely. And I want to check my instructions on my arrowhead stitch and see what she says. Um, Make straight stitch, horizontal row. Uh, see what she says if we need one strand or two strands. Let's see for practice. Uh, on the arrowhead stitch, let's see. I think we're gonna use two strands just so you can see it a little bit better. We'll use one strand in the actual uh, sampler. but And remember, when we do this, we pull out a strand. And since I want a second strand, then I will pull out a second one separately. So there's one. Okay, 
And then again, I'm going to park what was left of my little group of threads over in my paper. And then again, I always like to condition my thread. This is a personal thing. You don't have to condition your thread. Um, but I just like to run it over a little dab of beeswax. The beeswax is also helping to hold my fabric down, my blue fabric, so it doesn't uh, blow away. All right, and then um, again, it's bringing your needle to your thread instead of your thread to your needle, so I like to try to line these up, and then I always sort of snip the end if I remember. Sometimes I forget when I'm working with Ina, but get my little thread ends off. Um, I find that a freshly snipped end, a fresh cut, is always easier to thread when you have more than one strand than, um, than, and see how they fray out a little bit at the tips. I don't know if you can see that, but once you've worked with an end that frays a little bit. So a freshly cut end is always much easier to thread. Um, and again, we brought the needle to the thread and that was pretty easy. You can, of course, use a needle threader. They make such things. They are very handy. Um, all right, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, which is I'm going to make that knot and we are going to park that thread um, a few inches away because, again, um, I don't really have anything to anchor this on, so I will snip that and I'll put these thread ends in later. Now we're going to do the arrowhead stitch. So this one is up at A, down at B, up at C, down at D. So that's pretty straightforward. It's a pretty straightforward. Makes a little zigzag. I've been doing a lot of zigzag stitch downstairs on my sewing machine lately. Finishing hems. So up at A, down at B. Now we'll go up at C. And down at D. And there's nothing magical about arrowhead stitch. It's just... A cute little V-shaped stitch. So cute. So we'll go up at A again, down at B, up at C again. Oops. That is one thing. If your needle doesn't come out quite where you want it, then go ahead and move your needle until it comes out where you want it to be. Down at D, and this is very soothing. Oh, and I, I'm one thread over. See, I'm one thread away from where I should be coming back into that hole. Oh, well. If I was really worried about it, I could take it out and do that over. That's one thing. I, <laughs> it's just harder for me to... Uh, there we go. Get it exactly in the hole from the back side. At A down at B, and then up at C, down at D. Yay! There's our arrowhead stitch. Happy little arrowhead stitch. So here's our waist knots hanging out here waiting to be cut, and those tails will be put in later. And then here's our happy little arrowhead stitch. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Not bad. Very easy, very simple stitch, um, very similar to straight stitch, just um, a matter of knowing the sequence. And again, I love that she has these printed so that you can see A, B, C, D. And she also has it referenced over here on the arrowhead stitch, and that's actually on, which page is this one on? Uh, three? Two, yep, on page three. So, very, very easy to see, um, very easy to use. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and here's what it looks like on the back. And of course you always want your back to be tidy, um, just like your front. So uh, in order to keep my back tidy, I am just going to run my needle under here. Let's do three times pull a little bit to help secure it. And again, this isn't going to be laundered much, so I should probably secure it more, but I'm not going to. 
There we go. Happy little arrowhead stitch. All right, and now we run into one of my one of my things. We need to move the needle minder so that we can access that next uh, stitch sampler over here. And this one is a little more complicated because this is the buttonhole stitch. So um, I'm going to park my needle and change the color of my thread again. So I want to grab my little thread bundle and pop my soft loop open. And I'm pretty sure that uh, she used one of these greens, but let me check which green it is here. I think she used the brighter one. I think she used this one. I'm gonna pull that one out. And if she didn't, oh well, that's fine. That's the color we're going to use. It'll mostly look like the one that she made, so. Maybe she used the darker one. Actually, maybe she used the darker one. I'm gonna use the darker one. I changed my mind. I do that a lot. There we go. Pull that one out. I'll keep this one for later. Always put your thread um, back away, wherever it is. Uh, okay. And what's she recommending for the buttonhole stitch? Hmm. So the buttonhole stitch is also a blanket stitch. Um, and to do this, she says in her little PDF that you have to know how to make the buttonhole stitch or the blanket stitch and also a buttonhole wheel or scallop since the same principles will be used. So, um, let's see, I know I need at least one thread. Oh, there, that's off the back. We'll get rid of that. I think, I think this needs, well, she's using one. I don't know. Let's practice with two, just because I think it'll be easier to see. Well, no, maybe I... No, let's do two. It's a pretty big heart. I'm sure it can it can handle it. So do two threads, just like we did before. You pull each one out separately. Because I do want, want you to be able to see this. So, and then I just want to put my two pieces together up here. And two pieces together and I'm just going to smooth that strand down and again I'm going to condition my thread so I'll just gently hold it run it through the beeswax okay and it looks just a little bit fuzzy so I'm just going to trim that tip just a smidge there we go and then again, we're going to bring the needle to the thread. And I do like to hold it underneath um, my thumbnail if I have one at the time. Sometimes I don't. And then just kind of wiggle my needle back and forth. And there we go. Man, I used to struggle so much with threading my needle. But that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad at all. Okay. And again, I'm going to start with an away stitch. So I'm, I'm just smoothing my yarn all the way down, or my thread, excuse me, all the way down. And I guess it could be yarn. Make a pretty fine knitted item. And make my little knot. So there's a little knot. And I'm going to trim this one because it's a little bit longer than I'd like. I should have trimmed that black one too. Okay, so... Here we have lots of instructions. Turn the camera just a smidge and see if I can get in there better. So here we have lots of instructions. Uh, so the key with the buttonhole is that um, you make loops and you have to like hook your needle back through that loop in order to make the bars. See the bars that come across? So, and this one is actually a mirrored stitch as well. So that means that um, all the holes that we poke along here that we use for one side, we will also use for the opposite side. And I know that might not make a lot of sense right now, but I promise it will make more sense as we start going. Um, so with this one, let's see. 
you need to let's see for the wheel follow the same instructions as the buttonhole stitch but use the outer edge of the circle as your lower line and a single point in the center as the upper line nice okay cool beans cool beans this isn't bad okay so we need to park our yarn so i'm just gonna this is where we're actually working off of so i'm just gonna park it over here oops i just about lost the camera that would be bad that would be very bad so just park this over here do do do, do and then try to keep this underneath the camera hang on i'm gonna shift the camera just a little bit to try to get a little better uh, angle. There we go. You know, I think, Kathy, that you could um, definitely do some fun um, embroidery with hand spun yarn. And uh, I think it would be pretty nice. Let's see. So I want to come, yeah, part way down. That looks part way down. That should be my start of A. Okay. That's probably not where I would have started. This is where she has us starting, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. Let's see. So she, we're going to flip this around. So up at A, sorry, it's probably really hard to see this now. So um, because of the angle that she has us working, we're gonna go kind of around like this, which is not my preferred method. I always like to work um, kind of counterclockwise. I don't know why, it just works for me better. So if that works better for you, then please feel free to um, start with the mirror instead of starting with um, the other half of this heart. So, Ooh. up at A. And I actually need to do, I have to think about this. I'm sorry, this is so hard for me to think about upside down as well. Insert the needle and the line on space. Okay, so kind of, this is, I kind of did like just one thread over from this, so I've got a little something to hold on to. And then you've, I've got this loop started. I don't think I'm doing this right either, upside down. This is my C. This does not look quite right, does it? So this is how I usually do a buttonhole loop. We're just gonna do it the way that I remember. So usually I make a loop out here and then because it needs to go back into the same one i do this and i go in a little bit to the side and then i need to come out the same hole at a this is how i do it this is probably not the right way to do it either but this is not coming out very well upside down for me backwards. Let's see. I'm so sorry that I'm I'm doing this funky. This is again not the not the angle that I usually work at and anyway it doesn't look terrible. This may not be a proper buttonhole stitch at the moment either. Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me people. I'd have to go think this through a little more. Ina also got up at 5.45 this morning, so I am a smidge and more tired than usual. Okay, I'm a lot more tired than usual. There, that doesn't look terrible though. It's coming out nicely. So clearly I can't uh, 
<laughs> I can't follow along with her directions. Uh, but that's all right. My little heart looks nice. There we go. This is totally not the angle I usually work at. Looks decent. Looks decent. Could look a lot worse. I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyway. Alright. So you just keep working your way around. And I'm just going to keep working my way around. I think we'll take this down just a little bit more now. I'm trying to pull this a little bit tight, but not too tight. And you can kind of just lay your loop out there after a while. You don't have to uh, make it over your thumb. There we go. And then I want to do one more loopity loop down in here. And clearly I need more practice at this before I make my little leaves because, boy, these are not that pretty, are they? Mm-mm. I'm going to have to work harder. Okay. Well, there's half. It could look a little better, but it could look a little worse, so that's not terrible. What do you guys think? A little buttonhole stitch. Boy, that's a lot harder to work backwards and upside down than I thought it was going to be, too. Makes my brain hurt. Makes my brain hurt to think about what I have to do. So once you've done the first half of your heart, you have to mirror it for the second. So it probably would have helped if I had counted uh, how many of each uh, thing I was doing. But, oh well. <laughs> we'll just... We'll just eyeball it and hope that we do okay. So the key here is you basically want to go um, back into the same stitches that you have in the center as you go along so that it looks as close to the same as possible. Uh, let's see, so about there. there. This is just totally not how I usually work these. That's okay. It doesn't look too bad. And you'll see my, my thread is knotting up, so I'm just going to dangle my needle and let that uh, spin a little bit. There we go. This is how I remember how to do it. So. <laughs> Let's see. So this one's about there. And like this. Look, it mostly looks even, sort of. Could look worse, could look worse. And then this one's about in here-ish. And this is the hard part now, is trying to get back through the same hole. Okay, not bad, not bad. And then, what have I got? One kind of up in here. Okay, hopefully I got that through the right hole. Not bad, looking okay. And then, let's see, I kind of have one in here. And then, one more. Where I'm going to go into the center and then up and out one more time. So center, up and out. Uh oh, got a little knot forming. There we go. That is one thing that beeswax can really help when we get down to this last little dab. And sometimes you've got to pick at it. Of course, I've managed to. The very last stitch. Very last stitch for this heart. Very last stitch that I was going to do for you guys today. And it's ugly. Of course that happened. I was doing everything and it was coming along just fine until I hit this last stitch. Let's see. 
There we go. That is one reason to pull your stitches down a little slow because you can adjust things easier. And there, there, I fixed it. Ha ha. Okay, not bad. That's not bad. It's a pretty decent looking heart. Um, and to finish this off, I'm just going to take my thread again to the back. So there's my heart. It could be a little better up here at the top, but it's not bad. I need more practice with this for sure. So I could have used one more in here, I think. But hey, look, we have a little, we have a little buttonhole heart. So not terrible. All right, and remember, we want to secure it in the back. So you'll just take your needle and kind of run it through a few times. And with this one, I don't worry as much because it already has kind of a knot here in the middle. And trim that down. All right. So there we go. There's three of our stitches learned. We did split stitch, we did the arrowhead stitch, and we did this buttonhole heart, even though I kind of had to resort to the way that I'm used to making it instead of following her instructions because, <laughs> let's be honest, I was doing it upside down and backwards, and that was at least for the way that I usually go. Anyway. It works, it makes a pretty buttonhole heart. Um, clearly I need more practice, but hey, that's what these samplers are for. I'll get lots of practice here so that I can uh, make my cute little uh, leaves. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll have six leaves. I'll probably practice this before I do these six leaves, but I'll have six leaves in which to practice this with as well. So, um, in order to do the next set of stitches, what you'll have to do is move your hoop so uh, the top of your hoop comes off and your needle holder comes off and then you'll just move your fabric over just move the fabric over so that you can access the next set of stitches and you'll want to make sure um, that you bring those stitches that you've already done up and out to the sides and then go ahead and put your hoop on. And I am not going to tighten my hoop down today because we are going to stop here. Um, and I can see I need to move this over more. See how my fly stitch is too close to um, the edge of my inner hoop. So move that over. There we go. Now I can work that safely without hitting my hoop. So um, when we come back next time, I'll just tighten my hoop a tiny bit then um, we'll work the fly stitch, the long and short stitch, and the whipped back stitch. And I'll try to have my um, split stitch done in here so that we can just talk about doing the satin stitch, the padded satin stitch portion of this, because we already practiced the split stitch. So that was kind of fun. Um, if you're following along with a different sampler, then just remember that she does have instructions for all of these stitches that she uses in the PDF. Uh, so that you can reference those and um, you might even find that we are working some of them um, while, while I'm, I'm doing this particular sampler. Um, when you go to stop stitching, remember to um, always pack up all of your thread, however you're keeping it. So I'm just putting mine uh, back in my little sampler thing. Make sure that you... Um, Put the top on your scissors if you've got a top. I really like having a top for my scissors so that I don't poke myself. And then, um, you know, I always make sure that I've parked my needle on my needle minder as well so that hopefully that doesn't get lost because nothing worse than poking yourself with a pin or a needle. I think Tina is actually keeping a count of how many pins she has poked herself with um, in the sewing room. So that's entertaining. All right, uh, I'm gonna flip this around. So, there we go. All right, and uh, yeah, so I will be back uh, next Monday and we'll do the fly stitch, the long and short stitch, and the whipped back stitch, and then hopefully I will have the split stitch done so we can talk about the satin stitch. And then um, once we've practiced all of our stitches, then I'll start actually stitching on my sampler. And, um, I don't know. I, I suppose I could just stitch one day and we could have a stitch and chat. Um, and then we'll have to find 
something else to talk about. What are we going to talk about after we get done with this little embroidery sampler? Um, I really need to get the lace along finished. I, I have it more than halfway done and yet it's only more than halfway done. So I need to get that done and then we can do another blocking session. I can't wait to block that one. It's going to be so pretty. It'll be so pretty when it's all done. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, let's see. And I'll just chat for a minute here. What else have I got going on? Um, still a lot of garden stuff coming out. Um, I just made a big jar of, um, well, I preserved a big jar of basil. So uh, you take a wide mouth quart jar and a big pan of basil or big pot of basil that you've washed and let air dry. And um, I take layers of basil leaves. Um, and pack it into the jar. So you put a layer of basil in and then some salt and a layer of basil and then a little salt, layer of basil, a little more salt. And then you pour some olive oil on. And then as you get to the top, then you push it down and you pack it in tight. Um, and you make sure that there's enough oil that it covers the top of the leaves. And then you tuck that sucker in your fridge and you have fresh basil and basil infused olive oil all winter long. And it lasts anywhere from 12 to 24 months so long as you always seal the top with a little more of that olive oil to uh, keep the oxygen and the mold out of your jar. So that's what I did, uh, I think yesterday. Yesterday I did a, a big jar of basil. And then of course I always blend basil and olive oil. I freeze it in ice cubes and throw that in a gallon size baggie so I have cubes of um, basil olive oil. And I do that with pesto too. Actually Tina talked me into trying that. Fabulous idea. Works really well. So I have like little frozen cubes of basil um, basil parmesan and pine nut pesto that I have all winter long. Um, we got pumpkins coming out of the garden and I really, I gotta, I have to make some pumpkin puree again. And um, what else, what else have I got coming out of the garden? The tomatoes are kind of winding down on most of my plants. I have a few volunteers that are just getting started, so I'm still gonna have tomatoes for a while. Um, and my mint's starting to look better and I replanted a bunch of cilantro and and all of my porch plants. I'm trying some fun new stuff. So I have aloes and Thanksgiving cacti and um, I have one Easter cactus and I have a whole great big, I have a canning pot, like one of those big enamel um, canning pots that had a hole in it. So I filled that up with potting soil and I planted a bunch of wandering Jew in there and that thing is huge huge and goes everywhere and so I've been like cutting a bunch of that off and replanting it into hanging pots just for the fun of it. Um, but my Easter cactus had little tiny um, seed pods so I have an experiment going on where I'm trying to sprout Easter cacti and I have no idea if it will work but um, I figured I had the seeds so I might as well try. And that's another thing I'm collecting seeds so I collected um, sunflower seeds and peas earlier this year when I had peas and um, the dill is almost completely flowered and gone to seed so I've been collecting that and cilantro and celosia which is coxcomb um, trying to think eggplant I collected eggplant seeds this year um, yeah all kinds of seeds coming out of out of the garden um, to save for next year so and I have to decide if I'm going to save pumpkin seeds this year or not because I accidentally grew a hybrid so I need to probably start my Long Island cheese batch from scratch again. So oh well <laughs> lots of fun. Okay well that was my little chat session. So um, just some reminders make sure that you have liked the Facebook page to get notifications when we go live. Uh, Tina should be back on Friday I believe. Um, Make sure that if you're watching us on YouTube that you hit the subscribe button so that uh, you always know when we have a new video out. Um, make sure that you're shopping at blacksheepfiberemporium.com and helping us to uh, keep bringing you, helping us, that's a terrible sentence, and helping us to continue to make these videos for you. Um, stay happy, stay healthy, take care of yourself, wear your mask, wash your hands, wash your hands. Lots of soap, lots of soap and water. Um, and until, let's see, Monday, until next time, um, you know, just, just take care of yourselves. And I will see you then. Um, we'll figure out what's going to happen after we get our little embroidery uh, stitch sampler um, finished. Because these don't take very long and, and you know, the little stitch 
how to stitch little stitches doesn't take very long either. So we'll figure out the next thing next week. All right, bye.